top of the hand, bro. <coughs> uh, I want to put some information in the air right now. Uh, thank you to everybody that participated in making this possible. So we now have enough money to get the RV. Highly appreciate everybody that participated in it. Especially people who really, really participated in it. And even the ones that, like, you know, it was like, y'all donated a quarter. Like, some dude donated a quarter. And I'm like, yo, you in Cali. So, if you anywhere near, nigga, we'll pull up anyway. But, shouts out to everybody that donated. And everybody that was a part of this. This is most definitely going to be a wonderful thing coming into the new years. Uh, we're going to try to get everything up and running by mid-Feb. Uh, I think I'm going to start it on my birthday. Uh, so I started on my birthday, which is February 14th. I started on my birthday. I started on my birthday to get everything up by mid Feb, and pretty much we're gonna set it on the road. So shouts out to everybody that was a part of that. <clears throat> Highly appreciate it. This just shows me that when you give energy to the world, the world will give it back. Motion of energy. So, shouts out to y'all. Um, so, now let's get down to it. Uh, recently, recently, I was watching something. And, um, not only was I watching something, but I've seen something that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. So, i seen this pop up on my Netflix thing. This right here. And it's a, it's a show about Jesus. It's a Netflix show about Jesus. But it's about a gay Jesus. Now, I noticed... Now look, I noticed the time they finally decide to make a darker color Jesus, they made a gay one. The time they finally said, okay, we're we going to give y'all a darker looking Jesus. I'll give you a dark one. But he's going to be gay. Was kind of wild to me. What? 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 Hey, get your butt out of here! Come on. Go! 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 No! Go! No! 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 Go! No! 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 Go! No. That was kind of crazy to me. I was just like, "Yo, come on, man! Don't do my man. We finally got a, a, a clearly like a little darker Jesus. Y'all, come on now, G." I was hop. Come on now, don't do it like this, G. I was. I'm like, yo, they got a, a show about Jesus. I mean, I understand it's a white dude, but he's a little darker. All right, cool. This is gonna be fire, man. I'm watching the video. Oh, no. How, how you gonna? How you gonna do that to my boy, Jesus? No, nah, this like the coldest sneak this ever. But look. <clears throat> so. All right, so I want to go into some other stuff today, and I want y'all to bear with me. And one of the reasons why I want you to bear with me is because today we're going to get into something that is extremely offensive, but it's most definitely true. And what's good? What's good, King? We're going to get into something that's offensive, but I want the opinions of those from the other side. So, um... I want the opinions of those from the other side of this perspective. <clears throat> One of those opinions are, uh, what's good, GK? Yo, I'm going to hit you as soon as we get off this shit. Nigga been tired of with some other shit. 
But all right, so one of the opinions that I want is I got a question for people of non black. Reason why I'm not gonna use the word white, cause for some odd reason, when you use the word white, like people just get offended automatically and they be in defense mode. So, <clears throat> no, nah, I did fool. You see me? Oh God. <sighs> so I'm not gonna use the word white because you know when you when you say white, you know people get offended. So I'm gonna use people of non-black. Go. All right. So my question would be, how can anybody of non-color use the word immigrant? There's a question that I have. I want to know how can people use that word immigrant? What's good champ? Man, just getting it. But I want to I really want to know how can people use that word immigrant or how can people use how can people use the word immigrant and how can people use the word illegal immigrant and how can people use the phrase go back to your country or how can people use the the term make america great again like how can people say these things i don't want nobody black to answer this i want somebody none i want somebody non-black to answer this question I don't want no, I don't want nobody of any I don't want no Mexicans, I don't want no black people. I want non-black people to answer this question. So nobody really want to answer the question. All right, I see. Now look, I'm going to just put this in the air. So when we was coming up, look, I want to put this in the air. When I was coming up, when I was coming up in Watts, there was a gang in Watts called Colonials. And... Colonials was known for like not liking black people. Like that's what it was known for. Mm. Now, when I was younger, I used to be like, why they don't like black people? Like what the fuck we did to them? Right. And I thought it was some gang shit. I thought it was just like some full gang shit. Like it's just gang banking, right? But as I got older and I started to get deep into the understanding of this shit, I realized colonial then I started to do the definition of colonial I did the etymology and the full definition of colonial and this is the descendants of British army right? is a descendant of a British army then I think about the British army and what the British did to the whole planet I go, oh shit, this is way deeper than game banging. This is way deeper than game banging. Way deep. This ain't got nothing to do with game banging. This is way deeper than game banging. So I start to really, really start to put things into perspective. I started to put a lot of things into understanding. Now, I'm going to tell y'all, one of the biggest problems with life is we as a people, especially people in the hood, we really don't understand words. Now, one thing, 
that we got to understand is words and we also got to take use of the dictionary not only do we got to take use of the dictionary got to take use of etymology not only do we got to take use of etymology like you like all right like i said growing up in the hood the word etymology don't even exist i'm speaking from people in the projects i'm speaking from kids who grow up in the projects i'm speaking from kids who grow up in the bottom the word etymology don't even exist it's not even a it's not even like it don't exist if you go to the average kid in the projects and be like that go a thesaurus they gonna think it's a dinosaur If you walk the average kid in the project somewhere and say, that go a thesaurus, they gonna think it's a big old dinosaur somewhere. What's good, Corey? Back home. What did you say? I didn't hear you. I said, what's good, Corey? No, I meant like the week before that. A thesaurus. What does that mean? You don't know what a thesaurus is? Not really. Oh, well. But I don't think it's a dinosaur. See, you still got the project blood a little bit. You go to the average kid, the average kid in general don't know what the source is. This nigga know a lot of shit, but I don't think I ever took him down at the source route. He more like a vegan conscious nigga. The average kid in the world don't know what the source is. And especially a project kid don't know what the source is. It really do sound like a dinosaur. But going into what I was saying, right? We coming up, we as kids coming up, we really don't understand this shit. We don't know this shit. And not only do we not know this shit, but we point the finger at people who do know this shit. Right? No, for real. We point the finger. We point the finger at people who do know the shit. Like, for example, if somebody came in there and was like, oh, he, look at him, man, he reading a thesaurus. Oh, God, he a weirdo. Right? Man, look at him, man, he's studying etymology and all that. Man, what's that? Man, uh, man, that's bullshit. Right? This is what happens in the hood. So... Our structure of how we grow up, we was programmed to destroy the nigga that could help us. If we had a nerd in our hood, or if we had a nerd, right? If we had a nerd, if we had a nerd in anywhere in the scenario, he got picked on to death. Man, look at him. He a weirdo, man. Nigga reading books and all that. Stupid ass nigga. Look at him, man. He just sit in the middle of the street all day and read. He a weirdo. How is that weird? Exactly, son. So, what I'm saying is, now that we older, we ain't kids. Now that we older, right? It's, you're right. It's lame to try to act smart. It's lame to be smart. It's lame. It's weird to know things. Right, it's weird growing up. But the crazy part about it, I'm gonna tell you. Look, this the, this the fucked up part about the setup, though. Let me tell you the fucked up part about the whole setup. The crazy part about it is some of the greatest gang members in the world was actually the smartest niggas I knew. Right. This this is the oxymoron of it. So. There was a connection that was lost, right? The connection that's lost inside of the setup is... This is the connection that's lost. Some of the main niggas are smart. It's the niggas that's around the main niggas that just... They're trying to live... Oh, my fault. It's the niggas that's around the main niggas that's trying to live up to the hype of the main nigga. And they think the main nigga is so gangster that that's how they got to be. But they don't know that the main nigga is in that main nigga position because he's extremely smart. I tell a lot of our little homies this. Some of the niggas that died in the hood have full ride scholarships to major colleges. 
full rides. Niggas was brainiacs. I tell people this all the time. Niggas was full live brainiacs, bro. So, just you know, it's a it's an overall circular motion. Wait, actually, I'm gonna go left field real quick. I want to tell y'all a story. So, we was at. So recently, I went back to my high school. Uh, I went to L.A. Jordan High School, and I went to watch a basketball game. And my little brother, which plays for Santee High School, was playing against L.A. Jordan. So he was playing against my old high school. So I went to watch the game. There's a bunch of little kids in the stand, and you know, I know who's who because I went to high school before. So I know the square niggas, and I know the little thuggers. So my thing is, I wanted to hear the conversations of the kids like I don't want to hear the square niggas because I know they talking about all type of square shit you feel about it's still in me I'm still a hood nigga they was talking about all type of square galacticals and the, the sources and shit so I knew they gonna be set for life but I wanted to hear what the little thuggers was talking about so I went and sat by them I sat on the top row right by them and I just wanted to ear hustle a conversation right so Coach Myers, which is one of our childhood coaches, Coach Myers walks up to the kids and he go, man, y'all supposed to be out here playing with them. So I'm going to tell you, one of the little kids said, man, on Gio, what I look like playing basketball. Yeah. Remind you, he had on the Barclays, the, G the shoes that we call the Geos, he had them on. He said, man, on Gio, what I look like playing basketball. Yeah. And then all the niggas gave him three up top and they was all cheering. So I walked down there and I said, hey, little homie. He was like, what's the deal? I said, look, you know what's so crazy about what you just said? He said, what? I said, did you know Gio was one of the best basketball players over there? You know that, right? And you know if Gio was here, you actually would be playing basketball. Because he would have told you to play basketball. It's like, he looked at me like, what you talking I said, you know, Gio was a basketball player. <laughs> and you know, Tweeter and everybody else was busy and everybody else was extreme football player. If not, some of the best football players and basketball players that ever walked the fucking face of the hood. You know that, right? He was just looking at me and I'm like, you came to put that on Gio that you not a basketball player. It makes absolutely no sense. These niggas was extreme sports players. You can't put that on them and say you not playing sports. That don't that's like that's like disrespect, low key. So look, if you really care about BZ and you really care about Geo and you really care about these people, man, you will get them grades right and go lace up. If you really care if you really care about the people that you're putting that on, you will get them grades right and you will go out there and bust your ass on that fucking floor and prove to the big homies that you can continue what they were supposed to be continuing. Little homie looked at me and said, damn, big homie, man, nigga never broke it down to me like that on young. I said, look, man, look. I'm telling you this, man. Tweeter and all them, man. Juvie and all them is NFL players, man. Man, go watch these people highlight. Go watch these people highlight tapes, man. These niggas is NFL players. Go watch Dales and BZ. BZ down there killed the nigga on the football field. These niggas is, these niggas is sports legends around this neighborhood, bro. So... I don't know what happened after that, but I'm pretty sure that I most definitely gave him a completely different insight on how he should maneuver coming up. So going back to what I was saying, right? So let's go back, right, Phil? So words, right? So the problem with life is we don't really understand words. And words in general is why we are so far behind in really even understanding life. So... One of the main things is when 
captured and captured in a form of captivity or however we were captured. One of the greatest things they ever done was not to whip us, was not to beat us, was not to kill us, was not to eat us, was none of that. One of the greatest things they ever done was to remove our native tongue. If you could remove our native tongue and then install your own language, but not only install your own language, tell us that it's not, that it's like illegal to even learn this shit. That was the first epic setup because now we are in a game of not understanding how to cast the right spells, not understanding how to say the right things. We don't even process enough words to get out of situations that we don't even know how to get out of. When I was younger, I got banged on a lot because I didn't have enough words. And I got I got pressed a lot because I walked around the street mad. I walked around the street mad because I didn't have enough words to let out how I felt. So I walked around mean mugging, man just hating life. And and then another nigga that was hating life going to see you and then there's a form of negative energy just going to circular like that then he man where you from and then you just like nigga I don't even bang and then by you saying you don't even bang you know you might be it like it's ways to say you don't bang and there's ways to say you don't bang but niggas know you bang so you could be like hey where you from um I, I, I don't know I, Texas and nigga be like oh he a weirdo he probably from Texas then you out of bounds, nigga say, where you from? You like, man, I don't game bang, nigga. Nigga said, man, you from over, I know exactly how they talk, man, giddy. Right? Help me. No, I ain't gonna lie, some, hey. Turner. Hey, Help sometimes me. game bangers be going too far. Nigga be like, hey, where you from? You be like, I don't bang. Nigga be like, yeah. I am Turner. Where I you stay at then? Oh God, you niggas be it, it go from where you from to a full game of chess. Uh, where you stay at? <laughs> Nigga be having to hurry up and think of a fast rebuttal. Your brain, your your online, your mental map quest come up and you be trying to find a neighborhood where you know safe on oh, God nigga. I'm from Culver City. Nigga said, Yeah, you from Culver City? That's where you from? Yeah. Yeah. You got some cousins or brothers or something? Nigga talking about, uh, yeah, I got a brother. Nigga said, where, where your brother live? Nigga and then you got to scan again. Uh, uh, he live in, uh, uh, he live in Bellflower. You, know, you got to scan all of, all, you know, the Bellflowers, Cobra City, Cerritos, and things. Yeah, he live in Bellflower. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Uh, one more question before you go, my nigga. Hey, hey. Uh, you know, I, I got this laptop right here. You know, I'm doing background checks. What's your social, nigga? Nigga need to know your social. See where you really from. Oh God, nigga, really pull your social security card so he could. This nigga trying to do a full credit check on all game bangers. Go to extreme when they pressing. Oh man, when the, when the game banger really trying to press, oh god, he gonna go to the extreme. Nigga, what's your social security? I need to know where you came from. Oh, the set. No, nah, y'all don't see y'all niggas from y'all niggas that ain't from California. Y'all don't understand this press the issue life. When you in the city, niggas press. Oh, niggas press. When you in this, I'm talking about. Look, game bangers in the city, they got, they got powers. I'm gonna tell you how game bangers got powers. On God, look, Trill, you ever been walking somewhere low key by yourself? You talking about it's cool, we ain't nobody even out. On God, you must have went in the house and walked back outside. They about fifty niggas on the porch. Where the fuck y'all niggas come from? No. Hey, my mama, you be like, yeah, this like a nice neighborhood. Oh God, you walk in the house and walk right back outside. Like I'm talking about within seconds, it be like thirty niggas across the street. Like oh God, niggas just be chilling, talking about yeah, we gonna get him. Damn, where y'all came from?
My mama niggas be popping out the blue. Niggas be coming from out the ground like zombies. Niggas. What's the deal, cuz? Damn, nigga. Sheesh. What the? I know a nigga. I know a nigga was with a little, little, little slut piece on guy. You know, a nigga had the little side slut piece. You know, you was with one of your slut piece. She talking about come over. You talking about yeah, it's cool over there. She talking about it's cool. Trust me, it's cool. Nobody even be out. Oh God, you fuck around and slide through. She, you know, the apartment complex. It look like the baby boy apartments. But you like, man, ain't nobody even outside. Cool, I'm gonna just push up in there. Oh God, you walk up the stairs. It's cool. It look, the birds chirping and all that. It's perfect. You like, I'm cool. It ain't nobody over here. This low key. I got me a little low key thing. I'm about to pull up on late night. Oh God, you finish hitting. You come outside. There's about 90 niggas on the porch. Oh God, you just like, damn, should I go back in the house? Oh God, I'm going back in. You got to go back in and collect yourself. Oh God, let me check. Oh, I'm going to show y'all. Oh, mama. Nigga walk out the house like this. Alright then, baby, I'll check you out. Feel me? I Real nigga shit. Woo -woo. Oh, shit. All right, cousin, I'll talk to you later. Um, It was nice studying with you. Uh, tell Granny I said hi. <laughs> oh, my mama nigga go back in the house and switch that up ASAP. Shit. Oh, God, nigga had to recollect himself. Oh, no. My mama, you nigga come outside thugging. You see all them niggas over there? Oh God, you gotta slide back in the house and re rearrange your game plan. My mama. No, y'all don't understand it. LA life different. You know what's crazy about LA life? You know what's so crazy about life in LA? What a, you, want, you want more blueberries? Yeah, let's go get some more blueberries. You know what's crazy about life in LA? I was just talking to my, my brother about this yesterday. Come here. Growing up in LA is like playing life on like difficult, like the hardest difficult setting. I was like really thinking about this shit out here in Orange County, like right, because I, I live in Orange County now. But I was just thinking about like we was really four and five years old ducking shots. No, no, I, like I want y'all to really think about this because I'm this shit kind of bothered me, but it's wild to think about. Like we was four and five years old. Ducking okay. shots. That's kind of like to think to wake up as a four or five year old child and not know if you gonna live tomorrow is kind of kind of wow. That's kind of that's kind of. Like, that was on my mind as a four or five year old child. Like, I'm gonna tell y'all a real story. This is a, a real 100% authentic story. So, we had a pool in our neighborhood called Will Rogers. A lot of people know it as Ted Watkins now, but it's from forever be Real Rogers. So, I think I was about seven, eight. I'm in the pool. We swimming, right? All the big homies come to the park, right? Now, I, I knew something was going to happen because it was just too many big homies there. Now, in our neighborhood, people put that on BZ, so I'm going to explain the story about BZ. BZ, this was one of the most epic, iconic moments. And I think this the moment where BZ became one of the leaders of the projects. 
BZ climbed to the top of the diving board, which is the high dive. Right, this is the most iconic moment, and if anybody from over there, they'll tell you this story. BZ climbed to the, he walked up the top of the high dive. He was fully dressed. He had on Jordans, he had on the, the Jabot jeans, a little polo shirt, fully dressed. He climbed to the top of the diving board. To full bounces. Boom. Boom. Remind you, he fully dressed. Boom. Boom. Jumped off. Threw the hood up in the air. And cannonballed in the pool. Boom. The whole park went crazy. It was like an epic moment. It was epic. Because you just, it was just an epic thing, son. You ain't from the hood, so you ain't really going to understand it. Like, it's epic. Epic. Like I can remember this shit like yes, it was in slum is epic. Right? Yeah, really. Epic. He ain't do no flip or nothing, just a <sighs> Cause people like, nah, he ain't gonna jump in with his clothes on. No. He jumped in with his clothes on. Bam, right? So everybody having a good time. So me, I'm like, alright, some I don't know, man. There's too many things happening right now. Like, this can't be good. Man, about five seconds later, man, all you hear is all type of shots. Wow, 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 wow. So, right? So, me and my boy K Doze, y'all could tag him, K Doze Media. K Doze, I didn't even know K Doze then, but we shared the same story because he remembered. He was in the pool, too. My nigga, this is the wall. Like, this, all right, so this is the pool, right? This is a whole pool. This is the pool of the wall. We all, sw remind we seven to eight. We swim under the water. Bullets is coming past us. We swim and, and hide up against the wall like this. Bullets is coming past us, bro. Right? All right. All the shots is over. Everything over. Everybody scattered him. People panicking and shit. Come to find out one of the big homies got shot in the arm or some shit. Like, with all the bullets, the big homie got shot in the arm. One of the big homies got shot in the arm. So this is the cold part. Let me tell you, the coldest part. After big homie, remind you, he was in the shit. After big homie got shot, they carried him out of the paramedics. They did all the shit, right? After all that, guess what we did? Went right back to swimming like nothing happened. Hey! We went right back to swimming like nothing happened. Right back. Like nothing happened. Oh God, look for the bitch so you can dunk her. Oh God. Right back to swimming like nothing happened. What I'm saying is, we were so immune to it that we didn't even know it was that serious. We seven, eight years old, we were so immune to the shit, we didn't even know that we were living in a war zone. Every day of my life was literally like Call of Duty free for all. Growing up, in Watts is like growing up in Call of Duty free for all, bro. No, 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 not free for all, cause it's a little harder. Team Deathmatch, my nigga. You have friends in your head. Growing up in Watts is like growing up in a Call of Duty team deathmatch every day. Every single day is a team deathmatch. And but what's crazy is in the midst. In the midst of the fire and in the midst of the drama, it's still one of the funnest places to ever grow up in, and I wouldn't want to have one. I wouldn't have wanted to have grown up anywhere else. I feel like it, with me surviving what I've survived, it has made me one of the strongest mentally. Like I'm so mentally strong, bro. Like, it has made me 
it made me so mentally strong, man, watching this shit from the from the section that I watched this shit from. The shop. The shop is when I see kids that didn't have that life, they don't really cherish it. Like I see kids in Orange County that be depressed. I see kids in Orange County that be sad. Like nigga, what you sad for? You can walk to the store. What are you sad for? You can actually sit at a park. What are you sad for? You're gonna live. <laughs> My nigga, do you know how it feel to drive by a street and go, that's a nice swing set, but we can't go over there. We live in an area, I grew up in an area where the parks are the gangs. Nigga Carver Park, Mona Park, nigga in the parks keep going. In the park park, nigga. You can't even go to the park. My nigga, you can't even go to the beach. Nigga, Venice Showline Crib, niggas made a gang at the beach. Niggas went in the water and was like, yeah, this our hood. Nigga fuck around and pull up on you with some snorkels. Talking about, hey, what you doing over here, cuz? Bro, that's what I'm saying. Like, my nigga, you don't understand. Niggas made a gang at the beach. A nigga will press you for being in the water. Can you imagine just, you know, hey, hey, baby, you want to go to the beach? Yeah, let's go to this. This looks like a nice beach. Oh, God, you want to get in the water? Yeah, you get in the water, you swimming. Oh, God, you swimming. You must, you make a left somewhere. Oh, God, it's about 10 niggas under the water. Talking about, you talking about, what? What? Man, hey, meet me. Get up. Get out the water. You get out the water. <laughs> hey, nigga, where you from? What? Nigga, I said, where you from? Right? Talking about, what are you, what are you talking about? Nigga, pull out the burner and all from the water. <laughs> nigga, I said, where you from? Nigga, the Venice show line. Nigga, we run these beaches. Bro, this is what I'm saying. Like, in California, especially like LA County, niggas made gangs everywhere, bro. You got Schoolyard Crip. You got Venice Shoreline Crip. You got Front Street Crip. Back Street Crip. Nigga, nigga, uh, nigga, I think they just made a new gang in the Veggie Grill. I think it's like the Veggie Grill Bloods or some shit. I, man, I don't even know, bro. Nigga, niggas made the game out of everything. I swear to God, my nigga, it's a game game. Everywhere you go in California, it's something there. Bro, it don't matter where you go, my nigga. It is a game there. It's a game on every street, nigga. It's the hundreds. Nigga, the 90s, the 80s, nigga, the 70s, nigga, the 50s, the 60s, the 40, it don't matter where you, the 30s, nigga, the, the 18 streets, nigga, the 15th streets, nigga, the first streets, bro, it don't matter where you go, it's a gang, and you getting, so my thing is, right, I'm gonna tell you this, though, there is a way to avoid all of this and there's a way to get through all of this and i'm gonna tell you the way to get through all of this words bro the fact that we don't know enough words 
is the reason why all of this shit is happening. It's the simple words, bro. The thing is, we are all under a fucking spell because we don't know the right words. If you could say the right things and the right combinations of words to the select group of people, you won't have that many problems, bro. Communication is the the it's the epic key, and the fact is, we don't really understand how to communicate with each other. It's just simple words, bro. Words. That's all it is. Is words. Body language is a form of words too. We and that's another thing we don't understand. Body language is a form of word. Posture is a form of words. How you hold yourself up, how you walk, how you carry yourself. All of that is a form of words. How your eyebrows lift up, how your eyebrows go down. All of this is a form of words. It's a form of communication. And we how we represent ourselves, we represent ourselves in the form of aggression no matter what. When you see another black person, you automatically aggressive. Because you feel like they're going to do something you're going to do something. It's, it's literally the fact that we don't understand linguistics. We don't understand semiotics. We don't understand indexicalities. We don't understand, we don't understand nigga palindromes. We don't understand none of this shit. We don't understand etymology. We don't understand nigga epistemology. We don't understand none of this stuff, bro. Like I said, we don't even know what the fuck is the source is. We don't understand... None of this stuff. And black people, we continuously stay tense. We are all tense because we really don't know. And by us not knowing, we're going to remain tense. As long as we don't have the right language to fucking speak to ourselves. Now think about this. If we had our own language. Us, especially black people in America. We the only people that don't have our own language. So we don't even know how to communicate. A lot of the English words are negative, bro. A lot of the English words have negative texts around them that are designed to destroy us. I honestly believe that other races got languages that they don't even speak in front of us. I believe that. We are the only people, words are vibration. It's a vocal box. Your vocal box. All right, I want y'all to do me a favor. Put your fingers to your throat. This might fuck y'all. Put these two fingers to your throat and talk. What do you feel? Vibrations. What you hear come out your mouth is not words technically. It's technically a vibration. It is the same way a guitar works. It is the same way a keyboard works. It is the same way any one of these things work. You fucking rub the strings and it makes a specific type of sound. It's a vibration. That's it. Different combinations of different vibrations, which is different sounds, make words. And different different sounds and how we speak to each other will determine how we feel. We will process those fucking vibrations inside our eardrums. Those eardrums will process the frequency inside our mind. Then we will determine if we should act aggressively or non-aggressively. Robin, you spilled your food? Here, get some water. Here. Here, get your water. Get off my chair, bitch. 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 Oh, get your water. So it's going into, like I said, us just not really understanding words and by us not understanding our words and us not understanding, like, they didn't get that from me, brother. I thought he was going to drink it, but he's making them, they didn't get that from me, brother. Look, he's shaking it and the water's coming out. Hey, uh, put on this other thing for him. Uh, Gab. Gabba. He don't want to watch. Uh, he tired of it already. Right? So, going into what I was saying, like, right? So, we got to understand the words. We got to start learning the words. And not only do we got to start learning the words, like, 
the fact that we don't really understand our native language is one of the reasons why how our entire equilibrium is off. Everything about everything we do, especially as black people, everything that we you ever think about saying something and then it make you feel like that? Look, I'm going to show y'all again, right? Every time I go to my neighborhood, I keep hearing the neighborhood word so much that my entire body language changed, right? But I'm going to tell you, when I'm in Orange County, right? This is how I be. This is how I walk down the street when I'm in Orange County. Hello, guys. I got my little cool little walk, right? Whenever I go, whenever I go back to my neighborhood, this how I walk. Hey, daylight, what's the deal? Mm. Oh God, my pants be down. Man, hey, what's the deal? Mm. What you wrong? Never, you ugly. My mama, you ugly. Weirdo. It's just something about the hood that just make you like... You feel me? Like when you go back to the hood, it's like a, just a thing that just make you want to just blend in. I'm gonna tell you too, when you get to the hood, this this the first thing that happened. I'm gonna tell you when when you walk, when you come, say for instance, a bunch of homies in the circle, right? As soon as you walk in the circle, man, what y'all playing with chops? Chop. As soon as you walk in the circle, somebody gonna throw a few punches on. Man, what you Automatically. Look, got on him. Look, he wasn't even ready. Got on him. Look. Look, he wasn't even ready. I'd have banked this shit though. God, he would have went to sleep. That's the first thing that happened. As soon as you walk in the circle, somebody gonna throw some jabs. Size you up ASAP. Right? So it's crazy because it's like, like I said, the more, like a lot of people, they look at me and they go, like, especially people from our neighborhood, right? People go, yo, daylight, like, the way you, the way you talk now. The way you are able to incorporate how you feel and like the output, the way you're able to output how you feel is amazing. One of the homies hit me yesterday and was like, yo man, I'm so proud of you. Like like the where you have went with speech in general is amazing because like we listening, we might not comment, we might not say nothing, we might not post this shit, but we listening. Y'all gotta understand, I wasn't always like this. I wasn't always like this. Y'all don't understand. I wasn't. I, it was a time. I'm talking about in my 20s. I ain't have enough words. I knew what I wanted to do. I just didn't have enough words to express what I wanted to do. I didn't even know how to say what I wanted to do. That's why I feel just on my, in my, my rise in the battle rap community. Battle rap has helped me. In more forms than just actually battling. And that's why a lot of people used to be like, yo, why you don't take battle rap serious? I used to tell them, I'm not in here to be the best battle rapper. I'm not in battle rap to be a battle rapper. I'm just in here learning words. I'm learning how to combine words. I'm learning how to break down words. I'm learning muscle memory. I'm learning how to connect shit. I'm learning palindromes. I'm learning what we're doing, not how I'm doing it. All of that shit made me realize I am a true 
linguist and I have become a linguist and I've learned that I am more so like what do you call it a warlock right and I know what y'all gonna say oh daylight said he's a warlock I told you he was part of the Illuminati Illuminati confirmed you know you know how they like to cut videos and shit and put the little font at the top and then post it on conspiracy page daylight confirmed he was Illuminati warlock my nigga Everybody in a higher up is a warlock. Everybody is casting spells. Everybody is a fucking demon. Everybody is an angel. Everybody is just how you use the power. It ain't no, either you gonna use this shit for good or you gonna use this shit for bad. It ain't no in between. Everybody is a part of this shit, my nigga. All of us. We all witches. We all fucking demons. We all angels. We all everything. Every, either you going to use the power for good or you going to use it for bad. It's either or. We all are part of this shit. Everybody got magic. Everybody got all type of shit. Everybody. Either you going to be with it for the good part or you for the bad part. So I realized since... I only know English, and English is most definitely a destructive language. I'm going to use this shit for the better. I'm going to use this shit the best way I can to fucking use it in a positive way to fucking make people see what they don't see. I'm going to use these powers the best way I can. I'm going to use my smartphone, which is clearly fucking some wild... Man, the, the phone that you got in your hand is some magical witchcraft shit. How the fuck y'all even looking at me right now? <laughs> like, y'all don't understand this shit, my nigga. If this shit ain't powerful, I don't... My nigga, how the fuck y'all even looking at me right now? My nigga, what type of Illuminati witchcraft is this? What type of alien... Nigga, Tesseract technology do they got inside a phone that allows you to look at me real time on the other side of the fucking city. <laughs> My nigga. I just realized I got to use this power that we got while we got it. Whatever type of magical technology this is, I got to use it. I'm going to use this in combination with my words, my music, my sounds, my frequencies and say the things that I need to say. That's it. That's all I'm going to do. That's all I can do right now. That's all I can do is use what I got. Now, before I go, I want to jump ships. I'm gonna jump ships. But before I jump ships, I'm gonna say a few things to all. Don't be afraid to dive down the rabbit hole with learning. Uh, one of the biggest things that they have taken away from us in general, and I, I blame it on the phones, and phones have a lot to do with it, is attention. Phones are designed to sway our attention, especially the major social media platforms like Twitter. Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, they're all designed to sway attention of, what is that, uh, Vine was the first, the form of it. These are all things that are designed to sway attention because all the algorithms are set to the negativity thing. And people's negativity, people's attention for negativity is an epic plan, world star. All these things are all part of negativity. We all have access to study everything in the world with our smartphones. And yet people still don't know things. What's on your feet? What is it? You see? People have access in their hand to study everything in the entire world, but they can't tell you nothing. But what they can tell you is Whack 100 had a fight. Or they can tell you that motherfucking 6 9 is getting out of jail. Or they can tell you that so-and-so-and-so is dropping the new album. Or they can tell you this, but they can't tell you nothing about how magnets work. They can't tell you nothing about how nothing... They can't tell you how Tesla coil work. They can't tell you about sensory deprivation. They can't tell you about, nigga... They can't tell you about Novo Blind. They can't tell you about, nigga, nothing. They can't tell you about... They can't tell you about anything. But they can tell you about everything that's happening in modern society. 
and that's all forms of social media algorithm that place things in top banner format. This top banner format, whatever's at the top banner, whatever everybody's talking about, that's what everybody's eyes and attention is on. Here. So, what can what I can say is what I want y'all to do while y'all here. Utilize, especially while you got the opportunity, utilize your smartphone. Now, no, 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 no. I can't even tell you utilize your smartphone because one of the biggest problems with us is we don't even know where to start. Right? I feel like right now we are like the caveman. If you gave a caveman a drill and a generator, a caveman would not know what to do with the drill and the generator. If you gave a caveman a drill, which clearly needs to be plugged into the generator, and then you gave them a generator that runs off gas, and then you gave them a can of gas, the caveman would not know what to do. He would probably hit the generator with the gas can. And explode everything. Bro, I don't care if cavemen were white. Listen to me. Oh wait 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 wait! I'm gonna go down this. I wanna make break this down to y'all one more time. I'm 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 gonna say this for the nine thousandth of time. Stop saying that white people were cavemen. Black people, can we stop? This is shit I be talking about. So you think some niggas that came out of caves was smart enough to take over niggas who build pyramids? You think? Some niggas who came out of caves were smart enough to take over niggas who built pyramids that can't be built to this day. You seen the Osiris and Thor? Them niggas was dripped down with all type of magical staffs and all type of motherfucking meditational clinics, motherfucking body transfers and all type of shits. And you gonna tell me that some niggas came out of caves and took over, man, shut up. Oh, that's what it is. You use the bathroom. Hey, bro, cut the crap, my nigga. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. You ain't gonna convince me that niggas came out of caves and took over the whole planet. You're not gonna convince me that, my nigga. I'm sorry. You're not finna convince me that niggas who took over the whole goddamn planet came out of caves. You're not gonna convince me that, my nigga. I, I don't. I don't give a fuck what you talk about, my nigga. It's not possible, big dog. I'm sorry. <laughs>